everybody, Dave Archer of the Falcon Radio Network, and we're here to talk positions that could affect the Falcons in the draft early on. Let's talk quarterbacks, and who would have ever thought? Talk quarterbacks after 14 years of brilliance from Matt Ryan, but that's where we are now. Quarterback, that quarterback has moved on to Indianapolis. Marcus Mariota comes in, a solid veteran quarterback. Do we add a young player? Here's some guys to take a look at. Malik Willis, the youngster out of Liberty, 6'1", 219 pounds. Now this kid has got a monster arm and tremendous athleticism. He ran for over 800 yards and 13 touchdowns just a year ago. Some have compared him to Michael Vick. Now I don't necessarily see the running ability that we saw from Mike when he was here in Atlanta, but I do see a guy that's a little bit more accomplished passer than Michael Vick was when he arrived right here in Atlanta. This is a guy that's got to work on some of his patience and some of those progression reads that you like to get to. I guess the biggest question is his level of competition. Did he rack numbers up against teams that a lot of quarterbacks would have racked numbers up against? I'm not sure about that. He did have one game against Ole Miss this last year and kind of a marginal game. Just threw for 173 yards. He did throw three interceptions in that game. And that's where you begin to evaluate quarterbacks. What was their level of competition during the year? Kenny Pickett, another guy drawing a ton of attention, and why not? Pickett had a monster year at Pitt, guiding the Pitt Panthers to the ACC Championship and beyond. He threw for over 4,500 yards, 42 touchdowns on the year, and just seven interceptions. Now, tremendous, he's got a very good arm, very solid arm. It's, a very, it's an arm that works in the National Football League. He can make the throws, but he's helped by his understanding of the game. He has a real good recognition, and he throws guys open. That's what you're looking for, good enough athlete, his running ability reminds me of, if you remember Aaron Rodgers, middle of his career, where Aaron would get out of the pocket, run for first downs. That's what his athleticism reminds me of. The little drawback, maybe, getting through his read. Sometimes he hangs up on one particular throw, kind of looks at, stares it down. He's got to be able to get through his progressions a little bit more. And the big question about Kenny Pickett is his hand size. And so what difference does it make how big the guy's hands is? Well, as it turns out, when you get in competition, guys are slapping at the football, or you're in a cold environment, where you got to squeeze a cold football, sometimes that can be a problem. He had 38 career fumbles at Pitt, so there is some concern about the size of Kenny Pickett's hands, believe it or not. All right, let's move on to Matt Corral, a kid at Ole Miss, and a lot of people that watch SEC football watch Matt Corral get it done for four years with the Ole Miss Rebels. This is a guy that can run the football as well as throw it. Um, you wonder about the system he played in. Is he a little bit of a victim of the RPO system or run pass system? I don't think so. He's got a really big arm. He's a tremendous athlete. This is a guy that ran for 600 yards and 11 touchdowns last season, and he played against some of the best competition you could possibly play against in the SEC. Matt Corral, another guy to take a look at. How about Desmond Ritter, the senior that comes out of Cincinnati? He had a tremendous career there. He really brought Cincinnati, Cincinnati up to a level of where you're talking about them as a playoff team. They went to the playoffs this last year. But Desmond Ritter has a lot of experience. Started from early on in his career. He's very polished, got tremendous leadership. His anticipation thrower, meaning he's a guy that has an understanding of when a guy is going to come up and throw him into windows. And that can cover up with some of the arm deficiencies. He's not quite as big an arm as maybe a Malik Willis, but he has a good enough arm to play in, this, in the National Football League. Uh, and then getting through his progressions. You're going to find this a lot with the quarterbacks. When you begin to evaluate the QBs is how quickly do they get through things? Because they're not playing NFL defenses. They're playing maybe three or four times a year. They're playing an elite level defense. So do they get, do they get hung up on their favorite receiver? Do they not get through their progressions? Ritter has some problems there from time to time. It's not a glaring problem. It's certainly something he can fix. Last guy on my list is Sam Howell out of North Carolina. Howell, 6'1", 218 pounds. Probably a better athlete than people give him credit for, and he tends to get, let that get in the way. He wants He's competitive. He wants to try to run through people. Not going to be able to do that in the National Football League, but he is a, a good runner. He's got an extremely strong arm, so you can make, show, you'll see that he'll be able to make all the throws as far as uh, a quarterback goes in this league, uh, but his accuracy gets a little off skew, especially out of the pocket. Not necessarily the most accurate guy on the move, uh, but did have a monster year this last year, over 3,000 yards passing. 24 touchdowns. Remember, that was a North Carolina team that was depleted of a lot of their talent they had his previous year with the running backs and the wide receivers. So still a really good year for Sam Howell. A couple of the guys to keep, a, keep an eye on. Carson Strong, 6'3", 226 out of, out of Nevada. And Jack Cohn, another guy, a big kid at 6'5", 6'4", 218 pounds. Played at Notre Dame this last year, was at Wisconsin the year before. Had a solid year for Notre Dame. Quarterbacks, we're going to see some go in the draft. Will the Falcons take one? There's certainly going to be a guy available there that's a high-level player. We'll have to wait and see.